Welcome to the news hour. Initial stages of a salvage operation are underway tonight at the site of the bridge collapse in Baltimore. One giant crane and a smaller one arrived today with more coming. They will clear away the concrete and mangled metal, as well as the cargo ship that hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge. But officials warned it is a mammoth job. It is not going to be days or weeks or months. This is going to take time. Every single phase we have to focus on safety of the people who are doing the work. We have to make sure that we're doing it in cooperation and collaboration with all the parties that are going to need to be involved inside this work. We have to make sure that we're doing it in an environmentally sound way. And we have to make sure we're focusing on completion. Also today, the White House announced President Biden will visit Baltimore next week to view the operation. There are more signs that inflation is gradually easing. A gauge tracked by the Federal Reserve shows prices rose three-tenths of a percent in February. That's down slightly from the January rise. The year-to-year -year increase was still 2.5 percent, still above the Fed's goal of just 2 percent. Former senator and vice presidential candidate Joe Lieberman was laid to rest today in Stamford, Connecticut. Politicians and family remembered the longtime Democrat turned independent for his bipartisanship. They included Al Gore, the Democrats' 2000 presidential nominee, who chose Lieberman as his running mate. I saw him ready to reclaim friendships that had been seared by disagreements, ready to look for ways to bridge divisions, ready to seek reconciliation, ready to stand for his principles, always. Lieberman passed away Wednesday after suffering a fall. He was 82 years old. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now says he's ready to return to mediated talks with Hamas. His office issued a statement today saying that he, quote, approved the next round of talks in the coming days in Doha and Cairo. Negotiations have appeared stalled after a series of stops and starts. Meanwhile, Israel hit Syria today with the deadliest airstrikes in years. An independent Syrian war monitoring group reports 44 people were killed, mostly Syrian troops. The attacks came mainly outside Aleppo, targeting the missile depots of Hezbollah militants who are backed by Iran. Israel has stepped up strikes inside Syria since the war in Gaza began. That war put a damper today on Good Friday observances in Jerusalem. Fewer people than usual carried crosses through the streets of the old city. Elsewhere, Pope Francis conducted traditional services at the Vatican. And in the Philippines, several villages reenacted the crucifixion of Christ as they have for decades. One man, now 63 years old, was nailed to a cross for the 35th time. I can't tell for now for how long I can do this since my body is also getting old. And so I can't say if this will be my last or if I can do it again next year. It will all depend on my body. Church leaders in the Philippines generally oppose these crucifixions, but the tradition has endured. In Ukraine, Russia launched another wave of aerial attacks overnight. Almost 100 missiles and drones struck power plants at Kniv and Dniester in a wide-ranging assault across central and western Ukraine. It's the latest in a wave of stepped-up Russian attacks on Ukraine's power system. And a passing of note, Louis Gossett Jr., the first black man to win an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, died today in Santa Monica, California. He debuted on Broadway in 1953 and gained national renown and an Emmy as Fiddler in the 1977 TV miniseries Roots. His Oscar-winning role was as the Marine Corps drill instructor in An Officer and a Gentleman in 1982. Well, you've been all your lives at an orgy, listening to Mick Jagger music and bad mouthing your country, I'll bet. You better stop eyeballing me, boy. You're not worthy enough to look your superiors in the eye. Use your peripheral vision. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, every time I say understand, I want the whole group to say, yes, sir. Understand. Yes, yes sir. Understand. Yes, yes, sir. In later years, Gossett also appeared in the remake of The Color Purple. Louis Gossett Jr. was 87 years old. Still to come on the news hour, the Georgia legislature passes new voting rules ahead of the general election. An Oklahoma City Council member faces a recall election for his ties to white nationalism. 
David Brooks and Jonathan Capehart weigh in on the week's political headlines. And Beyonce drops a new genre-defying album. This is the PBS NewsHour from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.